Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. My name is Victoria English. I'm the head coach here at Alcohol Free Lifestyle. Today, we're going to talk sports, specifically sports and alcohol. It is football season, as everyone knows. And I'll just preface this with a, a fun fact. You guys, I bleed garnet and gold. I am a Florida State Seminole. I went to school there. I saw us win our first national championship. I was there during those amazing Bobby Bowden years. And some of my best memories are of football games, watching us win. And of course, I have some trauma. <laughs> Don't talk to me about wide right. So, you know, if I'm not drinking during this football season then you can do this too. It's been a rough season so far. And also today is um, September 26th. And I want to give just, I want to send some good energy and some love to my, a part, a, a part of Florida that holds a part of my heart, Tallahassee, as they are anticipating the potentially catastrophic impact of Hurricane Helene. So to all my Knowles, I am sending you good thoughts and prayers. So it's football season. And if you're anything like me, it's kind of a peas and carrots kind of year, right? Like time of year, like it's just alcohol and football, they just go together, right? At least that's what I used to think. So we're going to talk about something some things which may surprise you and believe it or not going alcohol free on game day can actually elevate your entire experience i know sounds crazy stick with me so let's start with why why do we think of alcohol when we think of football well money a lot of money is spent so that you will become conditioned to associate football with alcohol. In fact, according to Statista, a website that researches these sorts of things, in 2022, listen to this, the beer industry alone spent 760 million dollars in advertising, 760 million dollars during football season so that you will not realize that you even have a choice around drinking or not on game day. Take a moment and reflect. How does that make you feel? If you're listening to this podcast, chances are alcohol's bamboozled you to some extent, right? It's not working out the way you thought. Your drinking doesn't match up with those ads, those $760 million worth of ads. You're having cognitive dissonance. You're blaming yourself for the fact that your drinking doesn't look like what you see on TV in those 30 second ads or on the billboards or on the big screen at the games. No one stops to consider that, hey, maybe it's because alcohol is a highly addictive drug and it's designed to make us act in ways that are not aligned with who we really are. Wait a minute. I don't look like those people in the ads. In fact, I'm kind of puffy and got some extra weight on me. And so the invitation today is to be curious, recognize that you do in fact have a choice around what you drink on game day. Let's talk about alcohol during the game. We've all done it, right? 
Let's talk about energy. You know, football games are long and intense and emotionally charged. If you're at the stadium, well, it's almost October now. So if you're at the stadium in certain areas, the weather's getting beautiful, but it started out hot. Some of you, if you're say in Florida, are still dealing with some significant heat. And so let's play this out, right? You're energized, you're pumped for the game and you start drinking. You go to the tailgate, things start to get a little fuzzy, it's hot. You're dehydrating because you're drinking the alcohol. You go into the stadium, you're cheering, you're analyzing plays, yelling at the refs, yelling at the coach. So alcohol is giving you that quick buzz in the parking lot, but as the game drags on, your energy is drained. That initial pumped up feeling slows down. You lose focus. You may not even remember part of the game. And then, I mean, come on, how many times do we see fights at the stadiums? What do you want to guess the amount of times that alcohol is involved in those interactions? Seriously, are people who are drinking, you know, a soda or a sparkling water or a water, are they going to, are they going to get into fistfights, potentially get arrested, kicked out of the game, lose their season tickets? Are they going to do that? I mean, they might, you know, get in a, get in a little smack talk with someone, but are they really going to risk all that and get in a brawl if they're not drinking alcohol? Yeah. And then let's move to, you're watching the game from home. Oh man, I love that. In fact, here's a funny story. I live in Colorado and I'm from Miami. And of course, went to school in Tallahassee. And in, in where I'm from, you know, Saturdays are about football. So when I moved out here to Colorado and I started making girlfriends and everything, they would text me on a Saturday and they'd say, hey, what are you doing? And I remember being so puzzled. I was like, um, what are you doing? I'm watching football, of course. <laughs> so anyway, I've continued the tradition. Uh, my daughter and I love, love, love watching football on Saturdays. And we get all the snacks and everything else. And we yell and we jump on the couch and we, you know, scream. We put our, our heads in our hands. And we do it alcohol free when well, my daughter is young, so obviously, but I'm alcohol free. Let's go to a different scenario where you're watching from home and alcohol's involved. Let's be honest, guys. How does it go? Is it really, really adding to your experience? You know, we think that we need this stuff to socialize with friends that we may be left out of the fun. Except, let's think this through. If you're a football fan, think about how that happened. How did you become a football fan? For me, my dad traveled a lot when I was little. And so when he was home on the weekends, football became our thing. And being originally from Pennsylvania, we were Steelers fans. And I was lucky enough to grow up during that decade of Terry Bradshaw, Mean Joe Green, Lynn Swan. I got to see those games on TV and bond with my dad. That was our thing. And so I grew up loving football. And then, of course, going to a big football school just cemented it. And so when you fell in love with the game, was it because of alcohol? Think back. What do you love about football? So many things. And yeah, I know it's heartbreaking too. <laughs> but what do you love about it? Is it possible that you can have that when you're not drinking? If you're going with friends and they're your friends, does it really matter if you're not consuming alcohol? 
If they ask, my favorite response is, it doesn't agree with me. And they might be like, what do you mean? Oh, I don't know, you know, I've, I've, tried, I've tried beer, I tried wine, I tried white wine, red wine, tried clear liquor. It's just not agreeing with me anymore. Maybe I'm getting old, ha, ha, ha. I mean, what are people going to say to that, right? Like, we'll do it anyway. No, they're just going to be like, they may say, well, that stinks for you. That's all right. But if they're your friends, aren't you going to go have a good time anyway? If you have friends over to your house and your red solo cup has something else in it, is it really going to ruin the experience? Are your friends that hung up on what's in your cup or are you there to watch the game together? Remember why you love this amazing game. commiserate, you celebrate, and you'll remember all of it. Okay, okay, I do want to forget some things re about recent FSU games, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but you know what I mean. You're going to remember everything. Those memories are going to stick. And that becomes more meaningful. You know, what if you're watching with your kids? You just, you just heard me talk about my lifetime memories with my dad. Don't you want to create those with your kids? Also, let's talk about the physical benefits. Now, football games, like I said, they're emotional roller coasters, right? Your heart's going, it's fourth down, are they going to make it? You're jumping out of your seat, biting your nails. Ah, and then it goes into overtime and you are freaking out. So alcohol actually makes that harder. It slows down your concentration. You're becoming dehydrated. You're not going to be able to really tell if, 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 the, if he was in, if you're drunk. Don't you want to know if the ref is right? That comes with the mental clarity of being alcohol-free. Football's a beautiful sport. It's very nuanced and technical and beautiful. So I want to enjoy every bit of it. It's fascinating to me. It's like watching the game in high def instead of blurred. You know those vintage NFL tapes? Yeah, that's what it's like watching a game these days if you're drinking. Finally, let's not ignore that going alcohol-free on game day has long-term benefits. No hangover the next day. So, you know, I'm turning 54 soon. So I... I I have to take care of myself, right? You guys know when we get to a certain age, it's, it's not optional. Like we got to take care of ourselves. And so my weekends are, are extremely valuable. I want to be able to get up on a Saturday and move my body. And I want to get up on a Sunday and be able to go outside, go on a hike with my, with my daughter you know, meal prep, do things, watch NFL, of course. <laughs> and so why am I doing that with a hangover? Is that adding to your experience? Again, going back to the $760 million spent just by the beer industry. Are they showing you the reality? Are they showing real people the day after the game? No, of course not. They go to great lengths to hide the truth. Except deep down, you know it. You do know the truth. And so when we are, you know, our age, if you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know the truth. You know it's making you feel lousy. And it's not making the games any more fun. 
or any more miserable. Well, maybe it is, I don't know. Don't you want to be clear and authentic and like seriously enjoy this amazing sport? Your body will thank you. Monday morning will thank you. Your family will thank you. So there's my challenge. Why don't you go for it? Do a weekend without it. Watch a few games. Now, you might have cravings, I know. Have some extra snacks, a couple extra wings. It's okay, treat yourself, you deserve it. Treating yourself with alcohol is not a treat, is it? You know. If that feels like mm, a little too much for you, that's all right, that's where we come in. You know, if you lean into this science-based methodology, this scientifically proven methodology, our University of Washington study demonstrated a 98% reduction in the participants drinking, 98% over those 90 days. So, you know, if, if you're tired of doing it on your own, sort of like I talked about in those previous episodes, then let's do football season together. I want to know your team. We have a lot of, you know, banter in our community around football. <laughs> I'm pretty quiet this year. Um, but let's do it together. Why not? And imagine how you'd look in January. Imagine how you'll look at the playoffs, right? Maybe lose some weight, less puffiness. Your eyes are clearer, brighter, your skin's looking better. Maybe the team jersey that you have is getting a little baggy on you. Come on in. You can book that free discovery call. It's free, it's 15 minutes. You're gonna chat with one of our very qualified coaches. Let's see if we're a fit. Let's see if this is your winning season. Until next time, take good care. Go Knowles. Yes, I'll say it forever. Sending love to Tally. Have an awesome day. <laughs>